here at CES 2014. And uh, who are you? Hi, my name is Steve Kutz, Executive Vice President for Business and Corporate Development here at Whiteplay. So, uh, what is it? What is this company? Uh, Yplay? Is that a company? Yplay, yeah. We're based in uh, in France right now, where most of our customers predominantly we do the software for the TV experience right now. Predominantly in Europe right now. We're on a global expansion. We have offices in Brazil. We have offices in India. We'll be opening up an office uh, soon in Singapore and here in the United States. Does that mean your software is running on all these boxes? These are what we've done now. Yes, yeah. these are all these are all partners of ours right now. So we've also launched our software typically in, in an open source model right now. And if you look at the ecosystem, we have uh, partners that uh, are in the set-top box market. So all these cu customers here right now are the set-top boxes yeah. that will be uh, in your home providing the TV so experience, Skywars, for example. This Jisoo. Skyworth, you have Kaon Media, for example, a Korean company here. Uh, OpenTech, Amino, Koshuk, uh, Cisco, obviously a well-known well brand. Samsung, Huawei, Chongqing, AirTies. Okay. So we work with most of the, the major set-top box vendors here right now. So is this explaining what you do? This is explaining what, the, what the, our frog offering, which is our open source here right now, is offering right now. So if you look at it, we have a, a generic offering where we provide the validation tools, the middleware itself. We run on several uh, silicone uh, platforms right now. We'll come into that in a minute here right now. So that's the generic. Then we make from that several reference implementations right now for time to market to get the customers going here. So reference hardware with a reference architecture with a reference UI that the, the ecosystem can change or the operator can change right now. And then our marketplace right now is where third parties can develop and innovate on top of our platform and provide their solutions not to us but to the community at large. So the ecosystem is predominantly, if you start from the bottom here, starts with the actual chipset itself. Uh, whether that be MIPS-based chips or ARM-based chips, we work on both. So you work on MIPS and ARM? We work on MIPS and ARM. Or oh, first MIPS and later ARM? Traditionally, uh -huh. traditionally, it's been on the MIPS right now, but now we're seeing that ARM is making a very good penetration into the set-top box market right now. Uh, we have our demonstration over here, which is running, uh, one is on an ARM, one is on a MIPS. So we're seeing uh, their, their uh, uh, general acceptance right now of ARM in this industry. So from the chipsets, we work with uh, several chipset vendors. I'll show you that in a minute. Here. Several set-top box vendors, so you're moving up the ecosystem here. Several systems integrated or scaling partners, we call it right now. And then the partners into the third solutions here. So it's our open source type solution here. So uh, how many boxes have your, your software right now? And how old is this? Has, how long have you been doing this? The company has been in existence for 2006 right now. So uh, it's been profitable for a number of years right now. We still have the, the startup experience here right now, but we're no longer a startup here. We move beyond that. If you look at the deployments of our software, our software is running on approximately 10 million set-top boxes uh, in the field here right now. With leading customers such as Canal Plus, Vivendi SFR, the Vodafone Group, uh, Belgacom. Uh, so some of the, we very much focus on the tier one operators that need to very much differentiate their solution and not be a me too. That's our typical Linux market. based. We're Linux based, absolutely. We were one of the first companies to switch uh, to, to Linux, to start from Linux right from the beginning. What were the other people doing before? Proprietary operating systems, for example. Not, nothing to do with Linux? Nothing to do with Linux right now. So I think, as, and you're seeing as a general trend, we made the, the right decision because Linux, based on Linux right now, it's, uh, it's innovating all by itself. And we ride that wave going up to the fact that we've been using Linux from the beginning in 2006. So it was a, it was a very good architectural decision from us in the beginning. So some of our chipset vendors here yeah. that we're working with here right now. Uh, so some of the these are the, some of the leading chipsets that you will see in the set-top box market right now, the ATB market. Uh, Broadcom, ST, obviously two large giants, uh, M M Star. So uh, this is MIPS also. This one right here is that you're seeing here right now is an ARM. This is this is the ARM this, one. This one's an ARM right now by the. And ST. this is a MIPS one. Uh, this one right here is going to be the MIPS. MIPS so from Broadcom and the MIPS Sigma. These are these ones are going to be MIPS. Yep. There's no real tech. Uh, there's no real tech here. Real tech is not really a chipset today. We'd love to be working with them, but it's not a mainline chipset that we see in the set-top box market today. These are predominantly the the, 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 the people that have the, the market share, uh, the roadmaps, etc. In this market today. What does today. Uh, Motorola's big set-top box maker? What are they using? Uh, they're going to be well. Motorola is the the set-top box uh, the set-top box itself now part of. Now, so or Google. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So the Google right now, they're going to have a mix of chipsets. Their older chipsets are going to be obviously are going to be MIPS based. Uh, the actual roadmap of Motorola itself, which chipset is going to be picking, I don't know. So whether it's going to be uh, uh, an ST, an ST ARM, a Broadcom ARM, or Broadcom. They, they weren't using your solution. Um, Motorola is not using our solution today. But they today. sold to someone, right? Right now is somebody's. 
Uh, right, that one. If you look at Motorola today, it's yeah. uh, the, the Motorola set box business right now is uh, it was it was purchased by Google. Okay. So and Google's obviously a force that's coming into the the TV market space now too. So can we see some uh, UI how did it work or absolutely? So this, how is, this is our, our demonstration unit here right now. This is our reference design we call it here right now. Is it 4K support for the UI? We have 4K support, but uh, in this one right now, this is not a 4K solution here right now. So if you look at the reference UI, our demonstration is cut into two pieces here. There's what's on the TV here right now, and then we have the multi-screen experience here also, which I can demonstrate to you. So we have our live TV, we have all our video on demand, we have our applications and our shortcuts. Our shortcuts could be uh, applications, it could be games, it could be channels, and it's all programmable. So for every different user in the house, let me go down and show you that here. Is a family profile, so the TV has become a very personal experience. There's no longer one screen for everybody here right now. You have a family profile. John has his profile, with, and the favorites for John change, much like on your tablet, for example. Marion's favorite changes. She, she has uh, diff more gaming, for example, and less uh, TVs. And Justin's profile changes also. So the TV has become a much more personal experience, so that's good for the end user, but it's also good for the operator now, because the operator now knows who's watching what in front of the TV. And from that, then the operator can push relevant content down to the consumer uh, for a better enjoyment experience and, and more consumption here. So coming back to just uh, the TV experience itself, live TV. So my channel is happening, I go to the bottom, I can see AMC, what's on now and next, Showtime. If I wanted to go into Showtime, I can now record this. I have my recording indication here. My next channel, just remind me when it starts, I want to watch it, I'll go back to my TV experience here. If I go into the top, well, actually go to the right here, where it's, what's interesting we're seeing is social TV has become very, very important right now. If I click to the right now, I have a concept of buzz on. So if I click on that, what it's saying here right now is if I'm an operator, whatever operator is, is, in, is we're talking about here now, this is the audience. This is the least number of people are watching these channels. And the largest audience now are watching these channels. That's one dimension. And they're telling you right now by buzz plus is they like what's on or they don't like what's on. So you can come home. The idea is to really come back to this concept of pushing the relevant content down to the user to, 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 to simplify the, the selection process. Do you have like a personalized recommendation per user? We do. Now I can go into that instead with a recommendation nice. engine. So third it means party. like the third season of Homeland is not that good. Formula One is really good. Not even the third season, this specific channel right now, and it's been voted on by the users, by the operator right now in real time. Okay. So in this case here right now, the most popular channel is Body of Lies in my universe right now of my, of my operator, and maybe I want to watch that. I click on that and I watch that. So I switch to, I'm now watching the Body of Lies. Is there any way to, like, uh, because there might be many people at home, and some people have different tastes, to have different profiles? Or? There are. Everyone yeah. else has a different profile. So if I go back to my home here screen, this is Justin has his profile. Nice. Okay. Marion has her profiles with all her favorites. So let's take Marion here for example. If I go into Marion now, you talked about the recommendation engine here. This is all the recommendation here, this block here. And we do the recommendation based on either live EPG, video on demand, or applications. Nice. And the percentage is now is the fit based on your experience, it knows that this has a 90% fit of what you like and it's on live. We don't do the recommendation engine, we integrate it. There's several very good recommendations out there, and we're agnostic when it comes to that. With one of our operators, for example, Belgacom in, in Belgium, they, they're using the Gini recommendation engine, for example, so we've integrated that into their solution. It's a very effective way of coming back to the question of getting the right relevant content in front of the consumer very quickly. Can the consumer choose which recommendation engine to use? Or is not, that not the consumer, the operator. The operator does. The operator has to do that. And some consumers, kind of like me, uh, cut the cord a little bit and have lots of uh, like uh, downloaded stuff. Uh, do the boxes support that, or do your recommendation engine uh, recognize the titles of movies if you play over USB or something? You can, you, or you, local network? Well, the answer is, the answer is it depends on what the operator wants. Yeah. So typically in all these boxes, you're going to have a USB slot in front. And there, if you've downloaded all your content onto, for example, onto a computer, we at Yplay right now, our middleware, we come from that market space, where it's playability. If you plug in, if the operator wants it, you plug yeah. in the USB key there, we can recognize what's on that key. We can, for, we can uh, play anything on that key and we can record to that key. 
for this uh, MKV nice. format, anything. So Any format, all that works. That's and the, the titles would recognize the movie and say you should watch these now and those, That's based on what... That, then it comes to the recommendation engine, because that data has to be fed into the recommendation engine. The recommendation has to be able to, 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 to recognize that, uh, filter it, get the right metadata, etc. But yes, it's possible, absolutely. That's what the recommendation engine has to do. And like the 10 million users that have your solution have this, or only the newest UIs and some of the boxes, the latest ones? Or? It's, it's the same middleware and all those 10 million consumers today here right now. What's different? They all have something that looks like that good? Not it, well, it's, it, all our software is good. Yeah. But uh, really, it's the, the look and feel is different for each operator. The operator decides it's the same, under, it's the same engine underneath it, and the operator decides which functionality they want to deploy and use. So this is really good looking uh, Linux. It is, and as we said, we were one of the first middleware providers right now to make that decision to start on Linux, and really was one of the, one of the best architect architectural decisions that we made. So but we're who, seeing our who else is doing something like this? Well, we have our competitors, and you'll see them at the show here. So there's what's the name? You, well, you want to uh, say no? No, I. Well, just but you, they, they, who's number one? Who's like bigger? Well, there's, if you look at the if you look at the, the number, of, there's several ways of of, of measuring the, the middleware right now. <laughs> You have middleware which comes from it. So if I take a, a set-top box vendor here, a lot of them have their own in-house middleware that they sell. Uh, it's high volume. It's typically not the more feature-rich uh, type of solutions here. We're in the category of it. We're an independent middleware provider here right now, meaning that you know, if you look at our board, is we're not owned by a silicone company. We're not owned by a set-top box company. We provide the middleware to the operators, and that's it. They can pick and choose the silicone they want, the set-top box, everything else. So we have several other competitors in that in that space right now. Some very good ones. I mean, we take uh, we talk about, uh, for example, with uh, Cisco with your NDS. I mean, it's a good company. Uh, the, the they do Linux also. Uh, they're they're starting to do Linux right now. Okay. Yes. Uh, you have the uh, Open TV, which is also a very very good competitor of ours right now. Uh, see, there are competitors, but these are also these are good companies. I'm not going to knock them. They have a, a very strong position in this market here, is because they, they they've been good. So. Yeah. But how about uh, applications? And uh, let's say. Doing stuff with Android. Is this something your company's thinking about or doing? Or? Well, for us, is Android has uh, Android is a, is, is a complex uh, question here right now. Android is a, essentially it's a, another operating system here right now. We're seeing Android making some inroads into the TV market space right now, a lot through the retail. Okay, where you're seeing boxes that have Android with Android TV. Part of the challenge with that right now with Android is there's there's, there's two dimensions. There is first of all, uh, Android needs a very a, a, a strong processor to run on with a lot of memory. Uh, ARM? It's ARM based, typically is what they want yeah. to, to, to run on, is what Google recommends with a lot of uh, memory. And that drives up your bill of materials. And now if you're trying to, if you're an operator that has 5 million subscribers into the marketplace, for example, like that, there's a, there's a significant bill of materials by providing a, a processor that's going to be able to run Android. That's just on the set-top box. Now also when you're running Android, you typically have to have a gyroscopic remote control. For the to play games like Angry Birds, for example, like that, or unless you do it on your tablet, which adds again to the bill of materials here. So it's not a panacea for everything. Uh, I can show you here. Well, the other angle on the Android right now is security. If you look at a lot of the content right now, you're not seeing Android today in the mainline sort of set of boxes as an operating system because of the security applications here right now. If you take in the broadcast, for example, like that, there's no solutions that I know of today that has Android. Uh, the full DRM the, stuff? The DRM you can do. The DRM is a bit easier right now when it comes to the broadcast though. So you might see Android, for example, in an OTT box where it's just streaming OTT in there. There's, there's a DRM, there's no broadcast. Getting live broadcast coming in here right now, you typically have your conditional access there. And there's where it's the, 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 the rub meets right now. That's where it's more challenging. We're not seeing it. Our approach right now is we're TV middleware that is integrated. Uh, various flavors of uh, CASAs and DRMs. So for us, for the operator here right now, is we're the, uh, the stable, proven middleware. And what we do is when somebody wants to launch Android applications, we, s it, we sandbox that. We launch the Android applications here right now. Ah, oh, you can? We can do can that. Can you show it? Absolutely. And then when you quit that, then you go back to your regular TV. So it's like a... Uh, kind of like you have the Dalvik or something like that running on your Linux? Or um, how do you run it? I, well, the Linux, the Linux, the the Android, uh, the Linux is, is is us that's providing that here right now with the chipset. 
the chipset provider is providing the, the Android application that comes with the, with the chipset. And we call that so we can sandbox that both in a software and a hardware uh, container. Nice. If you want so you could, in theory, support tens of thousands of apps. Absolutely. We can. Here we're showing some applications. We're, we don't provide the applications ourselves. Really, as we leave that to the, the marketplace, we're the, we're the platform, and we let the operator decide which applications they want to be able to provide. Do they want to do it either walled garden or do they want to leave it to the wild, wild west open? That's really up to the operator to do. Is there any chance that the Chromecast uh, uh, protocol would work also eventually? We're seeing it. Uh, we haven't come across it really with our operators here right now, but it's something that uh, is, is innovating in the industry. We'll, we'll see how it does. Uh, I mean, there's many, many initiatives here right now. I mean, Chromecast is one. There's, there's many, many others. We're seeing some, some companies that are tr trying to provide low-cost uh, HDMI dongles, for example, to yeah. provide the second uh, screen experience into the, the multi-room, we call it. Uh, let's, let's Do you run on those? Do you we, run on the... We don't today, but we can. There's, there's no technical... You can run right on the HDMI stick. If there's the right uh, processor in there, Linux-based, etc., yeah, there's no issue for yeah. us there at all whatsoever. So can you show some Android? Yeah, so I st start the Android application here. So I've started the Android here right now. So it was already kind of like running or? No, not necessarily. I can stop it again here. So now I'm going to just go back to... Uh... Well, there's basically an Android app. It's an Android application with a gyroscopic remote control now, as I said. Nice. So I picked this here. I'm not necessarily the greatest... Uh... Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. You're going to get it. I might get this one. Right? Oh, uh... cool. All right. Okay. So... Uh, so one. I mean, this could be, could how be... many engineers are the company? Well, why play? We're approximately uh, 200 people. Uh, we're a technology-based company, so the, the lion's share of those are predominantly developers right now. Mostly in France? Uh, our, that's where the headquarters is based in France here right now. Uh, so most of our development is in France, but part of our opening up our software right now with the Frog initiative here right now is to really much get the source code into other people's hands to, we don't want to become the bottleneck for the operators. So the idea is right now, if more people have access to our source code, more people can innovate on top of it, and as well as be, being able to use our software. So it's open source, but it's not free, or? It's open source, but it's not free, exactly. So we, we let it, uh, the reference platforms, let people use those. The operator can get going, can, uh, not just the operator, the ecosystem can get going, test it, demonstrate it, uh, innovate on top of it. And this is more of a success-based model. When it deploys, meaning it's been successful, that's when we get paid. And it's a typical. But if small they do small deployments, so it's like trade show, they don't have to show no, stuff. No, absolutely. For if that, people there's... try to do like small stuff, it's it's free. Absolutely. Until you reach some kind of amount. Until it gets commercially deployed. That's all. So, for example, I'll give you. Let's suppose a university wanted to take it and use it for all their students and play with it. And that wouldn't cost them anything. They'd have to. Unless there's hardware, they buy a reference platform, which is at cost. But there's no commercial deployment there. They could play with the software and use it, test it, to build their own applications, etc. So the same with our, our set-top box providers. Operators can do prototypes, for example. So the idea is to really reduce these barriers to entry of, of you know, letting people play with it. It's really up, open up innovation here right now. The more people can start testing and trying stuff. And then the feedback is that people might be able to give us stuff back into the, the an operator might innovate. The operator might say, look, you know, this is, I'd like this back into the main line where it goes out so that every time it comes to me, it's already pre-integrated, pre-tested, etc. So it's a win-win with the community right now.